them into order on Tuesday, November 26, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. here in the Aldermanic Chamber. The prayer will be offered by City Clerk Susan Lovering. All the women, Marianne Melisi Golia, will lead us in the Pledge to the Flag. Almighty God, we have the high honor and the serious duty to manage the affairs of our beloved city. Fill us, O God, with the spirit of unity and understanding, which enables us to face our multiple problems with a serene mind, with justice and charity for all, so that any and all decisions made by us will always be for the betterment and greater happiness of all our fellow citizens. So help us, God. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would the clerk please call the roll? Alderman O'Brien. Present. Alderman Gidge. Present. Alderman Harriet Gathright. Present. Alderman Dowd. Present. Alderman Clee. Here. Alderman Laws. Here. Alderman Lopez. Here. Alderman Karen. Here. Alderwoman Kelly. Here. Alderman Jetty. Here. Alderwoman Melisi Golia. Present. Alderman Tenza. Present. Alderman Schmidt. Here. Alderman Clemens. Alderman Wilshire. Here. We have 14 present. Also in attendance is Mayor James Donches and Assistant Corporation Counsel Dory Clark. Does the mayor wish to address the board? Uh, yes, thanks, Madam President. <clears throat> of course, we all understand that we have an affordable housing issue in the city. Vacancies are very low. Rents have gone up, as have housing prices. But we still have some very good landlords, and one of them I visited today that is offering, on their own initiative, affordable housing right in Crown Hill on Harbor Ave. Uh, the a couple of Kyle and Aaron Worth have bought a building at the corner of Harbor and Otterson, formerly a, in a, a commercial building on the first <laughs> floor with residences above. And they're completely rehabbing this into 15 units, 10 units on the second floor, five on the, on the first, and are offering rents starting in the 700s for the smaller units and going up uh, a little higher for the, the units downstairs that are uh, up to two bedrooms. But they both work in the social service industry. They're very committed to affordable housing, and they've undertaken this project in order to offer very high quality but affordable housing in one of our neighborhoods, Crown Hill. And I want to invite any of you to, to visit there, and I want to thank them for their contribution to the affordable housing issue that we have. Madam President, there's a couple of issues on the agenda that I want to mention. Uh, one is R19-189. This was recommended by the Budget Committee last night and would authorize us to do two things. Most importantly, purchase a backup server for our computer system. The, we have seen across the nation a number of cities have been hacked and then have been blackmailed by the hackers. This has happened in, I think, Baltimore, Atlanta, and a bunch of and smaller places. Some of the communities have paid significant ransoms, have then realized some restoration of their systems, but not complete. Now, the IT department here has been very diligent in developing many different security measures, including phishing, trial phishing with city employees to, to uh, try to make sure that they do not re respond to anything suspicious. But uh, this is a, an additional step that would enable us to secure our system even, um, e even more, which is to, to locate a server off-site, uh, put on those, it, it's a, a group of servers really, but put on those servers all of the city data so that if we were ever breached for any reason, we would be able to restore the data from off-site. So this is a security measure that, I, in my opinion, is highly important. The Budget Committee, of course, recommended it. Uh, the same resolution authorizes the purchase of the city's first electric car. 
I, and this would be a used, a used leaf costing about $12,500. I, as the mayor, have been driving for a long time a public works vehicle, as I did before. Uh, that would be uh, used by someone else. I would use the leaf and charge it at the charging station right over on Elm Street. Again, I think this should be the first of other city vehicles that we acquire that are greener than the vehicles we have now. And again, this is a used vehicle, uh, nothing uh, very luxurious, but uh, certainly a vehicle that has a range of, uh, a, a, a good range for in-city use. Uh, I did want to mention, Madam President, the new version of the collective bargaining agreement for the civilian employees in the police department. Uh, we can certainly discuss this in more detail in the committee. This is a more expensive version than the one that was tabled last time. So we will discuss the details, but I at least uh, see significant problems. Now, Madam President, over the weekend we have some great activities coming up. Uh, on Saturday, of course, we have the holiday stroll. Hope everybody can join us there. The city government usually uh, walks down the parades down the, the street from City Hall up to the Hunt Building, along with the entire community, basically. I encourage everyone to come, not only the Board of Aldermen, but of course our entire, <laughs> all of our citizens. It is a wonderful time. We have even more activities this year, music, uh, uh, Santa, and other things that uh, families and children can attend. So I'm, I'm looking very much forward to that. Also, we do have Plaid Friday on the Friday before, right after Thanksgiving, before the holiday stroll. That is promoted by Great American Downtown. You can wear plaid downtown, but the goal is to get people to shop local as opposed to the Black Friday where the, the internet and the malls uh, do a lot of business. This is designed to get people to patronize our local businesses, our local entrepreneurs who offer uh, a variety of goods and services downtown. And finally, Madam President, uh, Thursday is Halloween. I would like to wish all of the members of our city government. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thank you. <laughs> Halloween. Well, I've got, I don't know why I said Halloween, but holiday. thank you very much. It is Thanksgiving. And uh, I want to wish happy Thanksgiving to everyone and their families. I hope you have a wonderful holiday and a safe holiday. Uh, we do have the, uh, the game uh, on Wednesday night. And so it should be a wonderful weekend overall. Thank you, Madam President. Remarks, uh, response to remarks of the mayor. I'll start over here. Alderman Lopez. Um, so I do appreciate that we're making progress on increasing the housing stock that's available. Um, the term affordable housing, as I typically understand it, is below the median income level, which in Nashville is like 66000 a year. Um, I personally think that we have a shortage of low-income housing, which is less than 80% of median income. So families that are making less than 55000 I think there's not enough units that they can afford, especially considering that the recommended housing expense is about 30% of your income. So people who, I think by and large, many Nashuans are paying way more than 30% of their income for housing. Um, so I do recognize that we have developers that are willing to help contribute to that and that the city is supportive of that. I think it's a huge step forward from last year where city officials were not willing to call the housing situation we have a crisis. I think it very much is a crisis, so we need to be welcoming of all strategies that will help people in Nashua afford housing. Further remarks? Alderman Melissa Goya. Yes, um, just regarding our 19189, um, <clears throat> I think that um, this IT's work to secure a backup server is certainly very critical, and I know they came to um, PEDC and presented their concerns and the efforts they've made, so this is certainly a major step forward that will also make all of their other measures effective in securing our data, so thank you. Anyone else? Let the record reflect that Alderman Clemens joined us at 7.36 p.m. Okay. There being no objection, I'm going to suspend the rules to move out of order and allow the presentations by the Boys and Girls Clubs and Alexis Durant. I'd like to welcome the Boys and Girls Club first. 
Hi there. Hello. Thank you very much for having us, and thanks for moving us out of order. Um, unfortunately, you moved us out of order so that the children from the Boys and Girls Club could come and present, but you notice that they're not here. <laughs> um, it turns out we didn't get that notice till it was too late, and they, between shortage of staff, given that it was close to Thanksgiving, and transporting the kids here, it was just too much for them. So unfortunately, you get me and my colleague here, so um, forgive us. <laughs> my name is Lelia Mellon. I work for the National Park Service, a program called the Rivers, Trails, and Conservation Assistance Program. And Cindy Heath, who's here with me, works for GP Red, a nonprofit. Um, we worked on this project since this summer with uh, Foundation for Healthy Communities, and then of course, the Boys and Girls Club here. Uh, the point was to have them join a cadre of four other communities around the state um, with what was originally a healthy eating, active living program of the state where we worked with children to have their voices heard um, for what they wanted to see for getting, for transporting themselves, walking, biking, from where they were to places they like to play. So city parks, ball fields, et cetera. And so we did two projects with them. We did Photo Voice and UMAP. Photo Voice has also been done for four years here in the city of Nashua. Your health department has performed it with the Boys and Girls Club. So the kids were used to that. And it's where you take um, both of these programs are well no known, done nationally for a number of years. Um, and so with Photo Voice, they take cameras around with the question of how do I get myself from my home, my school, wherever I am, to places I like to play and recreate, and what's good about the places I go to and what doesn't work, so what could be improved. So they take pictures of these things that they like in their communities, and then we had those pictures printed and mounted for them. We had a display down here in your rotunda for the last month. We had it up on display at the city library also. And then the second part of the program is we do UMAP, which is we look at a map um, with the kids and they tell us where they want to go. They map those routes. Then we look at them and analyze them and say, okay, what, where are the nexus of projects that we could try to work on and bring to your policymakers to have your voice be heard? So that is the synopsis of what we did with them. Um, Cindy's going to go through the actual work they've done and come up with our signature projects and our action steps that we've done. Great. <clears throat> Probably won't be hard for you to imagine me as a 10 year old, but I hope you, you can. Um, <laughs> so thank you so much for giving us some time to share the work of the students that we worked with at the Boys and Girls Club. So I'm Cindy Heath, as, as Lelia said, with uh, GP Red, which is a national nonprofit that has a project that um, supports children's voice in community planning. And so this was a project that was supported by the Foundation for Healthy Communities. And um, as Lily said, this is the fifth community that we've worked in in the state. So we're really pleased to be able to, to work with the, the folks here in Nashua, which has a, a history of supporting the youth voice. So we're really pleased to be able to enhance that. So what, what I thought I'd do is just share the photos and give you a brief summary of the project and give you an idea of what the students saw in their work and um, then we'll summarize at the end and Lelia will come back and share about next steps for us. So here we go. Let's see. <coughs> okay. Thanks. So did I do that or did no, you do I that, did Donna? That. <laughs> Okay, so if we can go back to the big screen. I think I've got the clicker working now. Hold it down for one second. See if that's going to work. Okay, you got the clicker. There should be a slideshow icon on the very top. There we go. There we go. Okay, Hi. thank you very much. So uh, starting with the conclusion, um, this project is all uh, online. And so at the end, we'll, we'll have a link to that so we can show you how that actually works. 
but we plotted the data that we collected between the photographs and the mapping project where we had conversations with the, the students about where they felt they uh, liked to go in the city, where they felt they were safe going in the city, and where they felt a little bit unsafe or maybe had some concerns. And so what you're seeing on this map, this is a, a, a screenshot of the online version of this project. And so we have these data points and the red points represent the places where <laughs> Great. Um, okay, so go. the red points represent places that the students felt they might be a little unsafe or fearful, and then the data that we collected is all available for looking at and making decisions about and communicating further with the students about some improvements that they think might be made. The green uh, points are those positive areas where they felt that they could walk safely or could access their recreation and places for leisure safely. So this is, there's probably about 50 data points. We had about 15 students that we worked with. So we collected a lot of information that helped inform the signature projects that you'll be hearing about in just a little bit. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so all of the photos informed the signature projects and the action steps that we're proposing um, that uh, the Boys and Girls Club work with the city on. And I do want to acknowledge uh, several of the city department heads that we've communicated with, some of them only briefly, who have been super supportive about how to implement some of the suggestions that the students have come up with. So many of the suggestions were around beautification and the students felt very positive and supportive and, and were very pleased with how much beauty there is in the city. So there were a lot of pictures of flowers as a result. <laughs> um, each student was asked to choose out of their 40 or 50 photos that they took, one photo that represented the positive aspects of the city and one photo that represented where they thought improvements could be made. So this is an example of where they thought improvements could be made and safety in the trails by having the trails be, uh, have a clean surface. Again, um, beautification and managing graffiti in the city was one thing that was pointed out. They thought the bike share program was fantastic and that it was well used. Um, one theme that seemed to emerge was trash, concern about trash and keeping the city beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we did meet uh, this afternoon with the students and with Nick from the Parks and Recreation Department. And so there is going to be a, a, an action step of including some of the Boys and Girls Club members in the regular monthly cleanups that take place at Mine Falls Park. Art and sculpture um, was one of the things that the student thought, students thought was really a positive aspect. Again, more flowers. They seem to really like the color and the, and the flowers and how it makes the city look beautiful and they want to see more of that. There was a concern about homelessness. So there seemed to be some interest in taking some action about that somehow and supporting the city's efforts on the, on the homelessness issue. Again, trash was a theme. And I want to point out the quality of these photos, as, as I'm sure you've seen in the other photos of boys' projects, but it's just fantastic what the students come up with. And with very little instruction, they were able to focus and write these captions that were, I think, very effective. So again, more flowers, more trash, more flowers. This was an interesting um, <clears throat> point of view where the perception of the student was that the roads are narrow, so that people getting out of their cars when they've been parked um, might have some concerns as the cars are driving by them. So we, so that's a summary, that's kind of an example of the photographs. All of the photographs are located in the report that you received as well. So one of the points of this project was to have exhibits, um, similar to the photo voice that's already been done. So we did have exhibits at the National Public Library and a reception for the students, as well as here in the City Hall Rotunda. So I want to acknowledge Donna Graham's support in helping us achieve um, the City Hall Rotunda uh, exhibit, which was up for just about a month, which was fantastic. So that got a lot of exposure. Um, <clears throat> we are going to be having 
further meetings. The students will be having fur further meetings at the Boys and Girls Club with the library director. One of the suggestions was a pop-up uh, library. The students wanted to see more libraries in the city. So the library director has been very supportive in talking about bringing the pop-up program to the Boys and Girls Club to meet that need. Um, and both the police department and the public health department community services um, have been uh, very supportive about meeting with the students. Those meetings have not taken place yet, but um, we're going to be facilitating those in the future. And then tonight's presentation was intended to, to have the students, um, which is part of the point of them communicating their vision to you all. Um, and they are certainly open, and Shay down at the Boys and Girls Club who worked with us uh, is open if any of you wish to meet with these students to hear their thoughts. They're certainly open to facilitating that with you. So all of this work and all of the data that we collected resulted in a conversation with the students about what we call signature projects. And so Lely is handing out a one-pager um, that gives you a sense of what they thought would be projects to focus on. And so Mind Falls Park is, was the first one. There was Because the Boys and Girls Club is so close to Mind Falls Park, a lot of them walk through it, a lot of them play in it. And they felt very strongly about having that be a park that was, was safe for them. And lighting seemed to be a theme uh, in the park. So in talking with Nick this afternoon, we brainstormed that perhaps some kind of a solar uh, lighting installation might support that suggestion. And one of the advantages of Nashua participating in this project is the connection with the Foundation for Healthy Communities, which has access to funding throughout the year so that we can begin to support um, having some of these initiatives actually come into play. So that's an advantage of having the city participate. The rail trail in Central Street was another focal area. And when we looked at the data on the maps, these were kind of where clusters of places where both the students felt they could go and they liked to go, but they, they had some concerns about going. So those helped us to find these signature projects. So more beautification. Another theme was more police patrols. And Nick did explain this afternoon that there are bike patrols on Mine Falls uh, trails. So that was a positive. And then finally, the, the Ash Street and Ledge Street pathway. Again, more police presence and then picking up trash. Hmm. So um, the, the police presence, the trash theme, the beautification, those seem to emerge um, as we talked with the students more and more. And then one of the things that, was, that struck us was that they wanted to see more field trips to natural areas so that they could have peaceful outdoor experiences. And that was significant to us because nationally, there's a great concern that children don't get enough outdoor time. They have too much screen time. The average number of hours spent on a screen is between six and seven hours for children. And that's a big concern to everybody across the sector of psychology and educators and, and community leaders. So that was really positive. And, and the Boys and Girls Club and the Recreation Department can certainly work together and will work together to try to make that happen. Um, so moving down from, from the signature projects, we have these action steps that we have shared with um, Nick and the Boys and Girls Club staff. And these emerged from all of us talking together about what next steps to take. And so the meetings coming up and then collaborating on the cleanups and the pop-up library, these kinds of specific um, field trips and grant writing opportunities to try to implement all of these ideas. What we find in doing this around the country is that children this age, mostly it's the middle school, upper elementary age that participates in this program, they tend to um, point out things that are fairly easy to accomplish. Sometimes they involve just collaboration between departments or agencies. Sometimes they involve a little bit of money, but there's not much um, expenditure or effort that needs to go into making these things happen to help them feel like their voice has been heard. So um, we just want to make sure we acknowledge, before I turn it back over to, to Lelia, Shay uh, and Janelle at the Boys and Girls Clubs, um, who were very supportive and, and helped us work with the students. The staff of the National Board of Aldermen, Donna, super helpful, Library, Parks and Rec, Public Health, and the Police Community Service Departments. The National Park Service provided funding for the project. GP Red provided technical assistance. And the Foundation for Healthy Communities, Healthy People, Healthy Places Plan, and the Active Recreation Work Group are the overarching kind of sponsors of this work. 
So um, I'll turn it back over to Lelia for the final where we go from here, and then we'd be happy to answer any questions. So this is just brief, um, just the what do we do from here, where do we go? Uh, um, the couple of these meetings that we still hope to have with the boys, kids at the Boys and Girls Club, um, we'll organize that to happen. It, being in this cadre of five other, four, four other communities around the state with Foundation for Healthy Communities, it's a link for each other. There's a, they're linked via email. A lot of funding source opportunities go out via that way and they can talk to each other and ask questions and get support since they've all now gone through this. Those communities, if, if it wasn't clear, Manchester, Haverhill, Berlin, Franklin, and Nashua. Um, so these were the communities around the state that the active recreation work group a few years ago identified as having socioeconomic indicators that showed that they were a little bit more vulnerable for those classic indicators of not a thriving wealthy community. Um, so that pretty much wraps up our presentation. I'm sorry again that we're not the children from the Boys and Girls Club, um, but if you've got questions, we're, we'd be happy to answer them. Well, you did a wonderful presentation, so we, we thank you and, and the students who couldn't be here, but we appreciate the work. This is awesome. Yeah. Really great. good stuff. Thank you so much. Super. Super. Alderman Lopez, did you have a question? I actually have a question for the president, um, but I guess also to presenters. Because this is about hearing children's voice, could we as a board make an effort to go to where they are? Because we've had aldermanic meetings in other locations before. We have plenty of special meetings, so if they're willing to host us, why wouldn't we just have a special meeting there so that they could present to us directly without them having to transport themselves? That sounds like a great idea. Maybe we can work that out. Anyone else? Thank you very much. We really appreciate you coming before us this evening. Great. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. No okay. Okay, next up is Lexi Durant. Now, Lexi came before us last November and did a presentation on her volunteer work with the homeless. She's here tonight to give us an update on what she's been doing <coughs> since then. So welcome. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Alexis Durant, as Lori has told. Um, I just wanted to kind of update the aldermen um, on what we have done since the last time we met in November of last year was. We have had three fundraisers. One was at Life Care Center of Neshoba Valley in Massachusetts, and uh, the other was at Life Care Center of Auburn, also in Massachusetts. Uh, this year, we have decided to not only help out Harbor Homes to group homes, but also uh, Marguerite's Place and uh, Bridges. Uh, we have fundraising happening now, actually, at Jenny the Groomers on Amherst Street. We also have a fundraiser on December 7th from noon to 6 at Palm Square. The details will be on the flyers we're passing out. Um, at that, we will have a silent auction. At, with the silent auction will be two Bruins tickets, a uh, will package, a ride along for two people with Nashua police, and breakfast with the fire chief and breakfast with our mayor. There are many things happening. We are sure to please everyone, young and young at heart. Uh, there's also a fundraising fundraiser happening December 14th and 21st at Life Care Center of Auburn in Massachusetts. Uh, we hope you all can attend on December 7th or Palm Square. That's exciting, everything you've been doing. That's really impressive. Thank you. Are Thank there you. any questions? <laughs> Thank you. Can I just mention one added thing? Alexis has been very vocal about wanting to support women and children's issues. It was her idea that we increase our fundraising efforts to also include Marguerite's Place and Bridges. And to be able to do that successfully, as she mentioned, our big fundraiser is December 7th at Palm Square. And we have a lot more activities going on that day. Last year, we had basket raffle and a straw raffle. This year, as Alexis mentioned, we have the silent auction. We have over 100 
baskets that we're going to be raffling. We have the straw raffle, which you got to come in to see what it is because it's a fun thing. Doesn't raise a lot of money, but it's addictive. Um, and then we have um, adopt a stuffed animal. So there's a lot of new activities going on. We have some people who have agreed to be banner sponsors and have paid a fee so that they can promote their products on that day. So there's a lot of activities going on on that day, and I hope you uh, will be able to attend that. And thank you for your time. Thank you very much. You. Okay. Recognition period. There is none. Reading minutes of previous meetings. There being no objection, I'll declare the minutes of the Board of Aldermen meetings of November 12, 2019, accepted, placed on file, and the reading suspended. Communications requiring only procedural actions and written reports from liaisons. Communication received from Lisa Photo, Director of Public Works, regarding supporting ordinances 01958, 01959, 01960, and 01961. There being no objection, I'll accept the communication, place it on file. Period for public comment relative to items expected to be acted upon this evening. No one has signed up. Communications requiring final approval. Communication received from Dorothy Clark, Esquire, regarding proposed amendments to R18102. There being no objection, I'll accept the communication, place it on file, and refer it to the Budget Review Committee. Petitions. There are none. Nominations, appointments, and elections. Appointments by the Mayor. To the Honorable Board of Aldermen, I have this day appointed Adriana Lopera, 137 Chestnut Street, Apartment 2, Nashua, to the Office of Board of Registrars for a term to expire December 31st, 2021. To the Office of Zoning Board of Adjustment, Jean-Paul G. Beaucher, 8 Fox Meadow Road, Nashua, Mary Ellen McKay, 9 Webster Street, Nashua, and Rob Shaw, 14 Sweet William Circle, Nashua, for terms to expire September 11th, 2021. Evstathia Borez, 44 Balcom Street, Nashua, for a term to expire October 1st, 2021. Jonathan Currier of 6 New Searles Road, Nashua, for a term to expire September 11th, 2022. And Stephen Lyle, 19 <coughs> Cabot Drive, Nashua, for a term to expire September 31st, 2022, and respectfully request that these appointments be confirmed. There being no objection, I'll accept the appointments by the mayor as read and refer them to the Personnel and Administrative Affairs Committee. Reports of committees. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the November 13, 2019 Human Affairs Committee accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the November 18, 2019 Committee on Infrastructure accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the November 19, 2019 Planning and Economic Development Committee accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I will declare the report of the November 20th, 2019 Finance Committee accepted and placed on file. There being no objection, I'll suspend the rules to allow for an oral report of the Budget Review Committee that was held last evening proposed, uh, regarding proposed resolution R19189. Alderman Dow. <coughs> Say that again. What? An oral report of the oh, yes. budget meeting. Um, at the budget meeting, we had uh, discussion on the electric car and the uh, backup server. There was some discussion about alternatives to the backup server, and we it was discussed by IT that those were far more expensive than what we're proposing. And this is critical to the safeguard of, of the city of Nashua's uh, um, infra IT infrastructure. So um, it was passed unanimously by the Budget Committee. Thank you, Alderman Dowd. Confirmation of mayor's appointments. There are none. Unfinished business resolutions. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So resolution 182, 118, 102. Um, I'd like to make a motion to take it from the table. Alderman Dowd. I make a motion to take R18102 from the table and refer it to the Budget Committee. Motion is to take Resolution 18102 from the table and refer it to Budget Review. Discussion on that? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Second reading of Resolution R19182. Relative to the acceptance and appropriation of 25000 from JSI, Research and Training Institute into Public Health and Community Services Grant Activity FY20 Environmental Health Tracking. Alderman O'Brien. I would like to make a motion for final passage of R19182. <clears throat> motion is for final passage. Discussion on that motion? Alderman Lopez. Alternate for the Health Department. I should know this, but what does this do in general? Um... It gives us money for the health department. I didn't mean to stump everybody. Sorry. Well, you kind of, uh, if I may, you I did. I, it's uh, on my docket to be read. Uh, but basically what it is, relative to the acceptance of appropriation 25000 from JSI Research and Training Institute into the Public Health and Community Services Grant Activity, Fiscal Year 20 event of uh, Environmental Health Tracking. So I'm sure it helps the uh, health department in their community work, unless somebody has a better explanation. All the women, Malise Goya. Um, at our Human Affairs Committee meeting, and um, <coughs> Alderman Karen may be able to help me. This is a continuation of the money that um, the health department has been receiving to follow specifically lead poisoning and looking at the tracking of um, where incidences are and the cleanup and providing um, blood lead testing for members of the community. And I believe they're not only doing outreach, but then also the blood lead testing they're doing in the clinic. Thank you. You're welcome. Discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Second reading of Resolution R19-189, <coughs> relative to the approval of the purchase of one electric car and information technology backup service from the Capital Equipment Reserve Fund, SERF, during fiscal year 2020. Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to make a motion of final passage of R19-189. Motion is for final passage of R18-189. Discussion on that motion. All the women, Malizi Goya. I just have to say, I think it's great we're purchasing a LEAF, even if it's used. I remember many years ago going to the car show in New York, and the prototype was there, and the whole body was see-through, so you could see how it worked. And I just I said it was a great car, so I'm glad we're going to be owning one. <laughs> Alderman Laws and then Alderman Lopez. I would like to respectfully disagree with my colleague <laughs> and say that I'll support this, but I wish we were getting a cyber truck. <laughs> watching videos of that on YouTube for the last week. <laughs> Throw some rocks at the window. Sorry. Thank you. Alderman Lopez. Um, so now I have two questions uh, through the chair to the mayor. Yes. Um, the first one, I guess, is will this be see through? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. And the second one is, it was my understanding from a conversation we had that this is to be used by you for transportation. Correct. Do you already have a vehicle, and is it also an electric car? No. We ha what I drive now is a, f uh, a Ford hybrid, uh, and a so-called Fusion, and that you know gets okay mileage, but not, not like this will. So we would ultimately be reducing impact? Correct. Other than having the mayor ride around on a bike, which he does. <laughs> all the woman, Malise, I mean, all the woman, Kelly. Right. Thank you. Um, just to comment on the electric car, since everyone is, um, I'm happy to see the city move forward with our energy uh, reduction efforts. Uh, well, you know, a leaf for the mayor is, is small. It's it's a it's a a move that shows that we're committed to that, and hopefully, we can keep expanding. It's a start. Right? It's a start. 
The motion before us is to uh, for final passage of our 19189. Further discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Unfinished business ordinances. Second reading of ordinance 019058, authorizing stop signs on Dinsmore Street at its intersection with Douglas Street. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Uh, make a motion to recommend final passage of 019058. I'd like to talk to it. Motion is for final passage. Alderman Dowd. Yes. Uh, the stop signs are actually on Douglas Street, and um, Alderman Jetty pointed that out. The way it was written is probably confusing, but the reason they're not on Dinsmore Street is it's a hill. And the reason for the stop signs on Douglas is because it's a blind entrance into uh, Dinsmore Street. And Dinsmore Street comes down from the school, and, and uh, so this is to prevent accidents. Further discussion on that motion? The motion is for final passage of Ordinance 19058. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Second reading of Ordinance 019059, authorizing stop signs on Charlotte Street at its intersection with Charlotte Avenue. Alderman Dowd. Yes, I'd like to make a motion for final passage of 019059. I'd like to speak to it. Motion is for final passage of Ordinance 19059. Alderman Dowd. Yes, uh, I don't know if anybody's been at the intersection of, of Charlotte Street and Charlotte Ave lately, but the BPW has painted a red squaring curve that some people don't ignore, <coughs> just ignore it, but uh, I found out today that the state it looks like it's approved our, our plan that we submitted five years ago for putting in a new sidewalk on the other, opposite side from the school on Charlotte, and they will also make that a uh, more permanent squared corner, and uh, this uh, as part this three-way stop as part of that. Earlier this year, we had a car go around that corner, hit a car that had stopped for people, kids crossing in the crosswalk. So we're trying to prevent children from getting hurt. Motion is for final passage of Ordinance 19059. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Second reading of Ordinance 019060, establishing a handicapped parking space in front of 13 Norton Street. Alderman Clay. Thank you. I would like to make a motion for final passage of 01960, and I'd like to speak to it. Motion is for final passage of Ordinance 1960. Alderman Clay. Yes, thank you. Um, this came to me, um, I'd say, early January, February of last year of... Um, of a family who rents from the place that they live, and uh, the owners are on board with this also. Um, she has a, a teenage son who has a disability and issues trying to get in and out of uh, her, her apartment. And um, the putting this, this parking space, this handicapped parking space in, in front of her home is not dedicated to home. She realizes and understands that it could be used um, by anybody else that were handicapped in there, but it's less likely considering it's right in front of that particular unit. So I feel comfortable going forward with it. She went um, and did all the things that she needed to make sure that her car would be handicapped. In other words, meaning that uh, she got the appropriate placards and license plates and so on, going through the doctors, going to the state and so on. So she's done her due diligence and then it came to this summer and so on. So we've finally worked through all the, um, the ins and outs of it and we're able to get through to it. Um, when this originally came through, I was considering um, trying to work with um, Alderman, excuse me, I'm sorry, O'Brien, about possibly putting a sunset clause in this, which I think for residents, we may want to consider that in the future. There are a lot of concerns about putting in a sunset clause as um, how do we go about it and who implements it and so on. And I did not want to delay this. Um, so I did not put one of those into this. But I would like this to um, go forward. Um, Ms. Rice was going to be here, but she had car problems. So she was going to speak to this at the beginning of the meeting, but had car problems and couldn't make it. Um, so I told her that I would speak to it as, as I was the one who, who put it forward. But I would like to see this get a favorable uh, vote. And thank you so much. 
Motion is for final pass of the passage of Ordinance 1960. Further discussion? Alderman Clemens. Yeah, I'll just say, um, just to uh, back up the previous speaker, it's not without precedent that the city has done similar things, um, both for residents and for businesses. When Rice's Pharmacy was still on Main Street, um, there was a handicapped parking space outside of their business because a lot of the... Um, patrons were handicapped that went there um, and it was convenient for them. So we've done things like this before in the past. Um, and typically when the need is gone, you know, you'll, you'll hear from, you know, like the business that moved into Rice's at the time was a tattoo parlor. They said, approached the board at the time and said, can you remove this? There's not really the need. And so the board rescinded that. And, you know, so I would imagine if a new resident comes in there that doesn't need that, we'd probably hear from, from them. And so the need for a sunset clause, in my opinion, I think isn't overwhelming when, you know, the community will reach out to us um, when these things have, uh, when the time has come for these things to, to change. Further discussion? Motion is for final passage of Ordinance 1960. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Second reading of Ordinance 19061, authorizing stop signs on Glen Drive at its intersection with Nottingham Drive. Alderman Gathright. My motion for final passage of 19-061, and I would like to speak to it. Motion is for final passage of Ordinance 1961. Alderman Gathright. Okay, for those that might not realize it, Glen Drive is like a half mile of hill and cars just come straight down, straight down. And that intersection is a bus stop, school bus stop. And probably about a month and a half ago, there was a terrible accident there about 10 minutes before the bus, the kids got off the bus, but damaged property, tore up another car in the driveway, tore up a, um, the mailbox, the whole nine yards. And, um, so the um, several, I got several calls from Glen Drive at that time and asking to come look at the damage that was done on the street. And I think Mike did the same thing. We both got calls. And um, so um, we agreed that, you know, it wasn't the first time and that there's always been complaint, complaints right there at that school bus stop. So it was really important that um, they have a four-way stop sign. Currently today, it's a two-way stop sign on Nottingham but nothing to stop the cars that have come zooming down Glen. And um, so I know that, you know, Glen Street, Glen, Glen Road will be very happy, as well as Nottingham, with the four-way stop, particularly since it's a school bus stop sign. Okay. Further discussion? Motion is for final passage of Ordinance 19061. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Do you want to withdraw 64? All the woman, Melissa Golia. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Um, Ms. Levering just said something to me. Um, I'd like to make a motion to withdraw 019-064 from um, committee. Motion is to withdraw Ordinance 19-064 from the Personnel and Administrative Affairs Committee. Discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. All the women, Melissa Golia. Yes, I uh, move that a public hearing be scheduled relative <laughs> to Ordinance 019-064 on December 5, 2019, um, before the Planning and Economic Development Committee. The motion is to um, hold a public hearing on Ordinance 19064 on December 5th at 6 p.m. before the Planning and Economic Development Committee. Discussion on that motion. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This will also be assigned, well, assigned to the Planning, to the planning and Economic Development Spelt Committee. Me, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. New business resolutions. 
First reading of Resolution R-19-192, authorizing the City of Nashua to enter into a contract with Fuel Media Holdings for advertising services. Additional sponsors? Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Dowd, Alderwoman Melissa Goya. Given its first reading, I'll sign that to the Budget Review Committee. <coughs> first reading of Resolution R-19-193, relative to the transfer of $3,250 from Department 194 Contingency, Account 70100 General Contingency, to the Nashua Airport for the purpose of funding a portion of the cost of snow removal equipment. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderwoman Gathright, Alderman Dowd, Alderman, Alderman Clee, Alderman Lopez, Alderwoman Melissa Goya, and Alderman Schmidt. Given its first reading, I'll assign that to the Budget Review Committee. First reading of Resolution R-19-194, approving the cost items of a collective bargaining agreement between the Nashua Police Commission and the Nashua Police Supervisors Association from July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2023, in authorizing related transfers. Additional sponsors. Alderman Gathright, Alderman Dowd, Alderman Clay, Alderman Lodz, Alderman Lopez. Alderwoman Melissa Goya, Alderman Schmidt, Alderman Clemens. Given its first reading, that will be assigned to the Budget Review Committee. First reading of Resolution R-19-195, relative to the acceptance and appropriation of $63,790 from the State of New Hampshire Department of Justice into Police Grant Activity Fiscal Year 2020, Violence Against Women Act, VAWA, grant program and to authorize the transfer of matching funds. Additional sponsors, Alderman O'Brien, Alderman Gathright, Alderman Dowd, Alderman Clay, Alderman Laws, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Karen, <clears throat> Alderwoman, Melissa, Alderwoman Kelly, Alderwoman Melissa Colia, Alderman Tenza, Alderman Schmidt, and Alderman Clemens. Given its first reading, that will be assigned to the Human Affairs Committee. New business ordinances. Ordinance. O-19-065, prohibiting parking on Allen Street between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m., Monday through Friday, while school is in session. Additional sponsors? Alderman Gathright, Alderman Dowd, Alderman Clee, Alderman Lopez, Alderman Melissa Goya. Given its first reading, that will be assigned to the Committee on Infrastructure. Ordinance O-19-066, removing the 15-minute parking time limit on a portion of the east side of Walnut Street. Additional sponsors? Alderman Gathright, Alderman Lopez, you already are a sponsor. I'm sponsoring it again. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Kelly, right Alderman Melissa Goya, Alderman Schmidt, and myself. Given his first reading, I'll assign that to the Committee on Infrastructure. Period for public comment. Um, Cindy Heath and Lelia are gone. They're, Alexis Durant already spoke. Uh, Stacy Lawton, give your name and address for the record, please. Hello, um, Stacy Lawton, 80 Elm Street, Unit 1, Nashua, New Hampshire. And um, I come to you tonight uh, uh, with a different issue than what I've spoken to in the past. Um, I, as you no, I, as I just stated, I live at 80 Elm Street. And I'd like to talk to you a minute about my street and some, uh, some traffic issues we have. Um, I, where I live, right at 80 Elm Street, is right across the street from us. We have the side street, um, Oak Street. And we have oftentimes, we have a sign right next to my driveway that says, one way, and that's one way heading towards Otterson Street, heading towards um, the middle school. Um, vehicles aggressively ignore that one way sign. We see that all day long, all night long. We see, uh, you know, uh, people, they, it's, the sign does appear to be a bit dull, but um, Nobody even listens to it. Um, we've, I've even seen people come in all the way down from the Otterson Street side, you know, and, and they'll be driving, you know, the wrong way all the way down. I even had uh, an Uber the, uh, recently, actually the day of the, uh, the parade that we were all in. Um, the Uber driver came, must have come down Oak Street, parked in front of my house, and proceeded to go towards Kinsley Street in the wrong direction. Um, and uh, I, I'm concerned that maybe the sign isn't bright enough. Maybe the, um, you know, 
the other signage isn't uh, working. Um, I, I do believe as you get towards the end of our street, because it is a school zone, it's supposed to be reduced down to 20. Nobody listens to that either. Um, we, uh, oftentimes we, yeah, I'll hear, my wife will hear people just zipping down the street, especially when recently the, um, the street was uh, unpaved and it was just the stone that was out there. And you could hear them rumble right down in the middle of the night. And our bedroom <coughs> happens to be right in the front of the house and, and the vehicles would just fly right down and it's an unsafe situation. And, um, and from personal experience, I know um, when I was living in Laconia, the, the street we lived on prior to moving back to Nashua, just after my uh, family and I moved back here, uh, there was a terrible accident on that street. That was Messer Street in Laconia. That was right next to the middle school in, in that city as well. And uh, two little girls were hit by a drunken driver and then were... Um, uh, the vehicle that hit them proceeded to back up and re-back over them, which is a very sad and traumatic situation to have happened. But my concern is with there being, you know, my next door neighbor has children that use these special ed buses. We see a lot of school buses coming down there. We see a lot of students going to the school. My concern is, is that um, there's going to be um, a situation like that where we're going to see someone get hurt uh, coming down Elm Street that, um, that, you know, maybe there should be added patrols, better signage. I don't know what, but I do know that even my neighbor uh, to the other side of me was warning me that, you know, once the road gets paved, it's going to be like a little mini speedway coming down that section of Elm Street from Kinsley to Otterson. So... I, I don't know, there's a, a few issues there that I'm a bit concerned about. Definitely the speeding and, um, and definitely uh, the maybe more signage needs to be put up uh, promoting that it is a one way and uh, because uh, nobody really pays attention to those one way signs as it is and definitely I'm really concerned about the speeding um, and, and the children in my neighborhood. Thank you. And also uh, the, the board here, um, yeah, happy Thanksgiving this week, and um, I hope you have a lot to be thankful for this year. I know I certainly have a lot to be thankful for, and um, that's all I have to say this evening, and you have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Remarks by members of the board. I'll start on this side tonight. Alderman Clemens. just want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Tenza. So I just want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, too. Um, you know, I think we have a lot to be thankful for uh, here in the city. We have a lot to be thankful for uh, as a group um, on this board. So um, thank you to all of my uh, colleagues that uh, I've had a chance to serve with over the last two years. Uh, looking forward to serving uh, at least a couple more uh, with you folks. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to mention, a lot of people, it's a, a great time of year for a lot of people. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that uh, tomorrow night, Wednesday before Thanksgiving, uh, is is known um, as Black Wednesday for a lot of people um, because people go out um, drunk driving incidents uh, and arrests uh, raise from tomorrow night uh, through through New Year's significantly. So um, you know, let's have a great Thanksgiving uh, Thanksgiving weekend here in Nashua. Well, let's all please remember to be responsible. Uh, be respectful and uh, stay safe. Thank you. Yes, um, I'd just like to echo the mayor's invitations to everyone for both Plaid Friday and the stroll. I know um, our downtown merchants in Great America downtown have been working with the city departments to um, dress up the street, and they're ready to <coughs> meet you and um, wish you a happy holiday season. And then happy Thanksgiving to all of you and to the members of our community. Thank you. Alderman Jetty. Um, so next, um, you know, I, I hope everyone has a happy Thanksgiving, but next Monday we get back to work. We have a, uh, a public hearing on uh, several bonds, and um, you know, one of them is the middle school uh, bond for the middle school. We had a, an informational meeting at um, uh, Maine Dunstable School. Uh, that gave uh, people a chance to ask questions about it. Um, unfortunately, uh, one of the bonds that um, 
is on the schedule for Monday, this uh, coming Monday, is um, uh, the bond to uh, build a new public works building. And um, unfortunately, the, we haven't been able to have the public informational meeting uh, prior to the public hearing. I, I noticed that uh, today, I think it was, we were all invited to a public informational meeting on December 9th, which is the week after. Um, so, you know, I don't know, um, you know, I confess ignorance on whether or not that the, the, the public hearing scheduled for December 2nd, uh, since we voted on that, whether we have to do something here and whether I could, whether it's necessary for me to make a motion to postpone that public hearing until after the uh, informational hearing is held on December 9th. Uh, so I'm asking for your guidance there whether that's necessary or not. Well, the public hearing does give the opportunity for the public to come in and, and express any concerns. I, I thought about it because you did mention it to me before the meeting tonight. Um, I don't see a need to take that bond off the table and um, hold it because the people that are concerned about it have a right to come here. That's what the public hearing is about. And, and well, if they get two opportunities, all the better, because they'll still have an opportunity the following week. Uh, with all due respect, I don't know if I'm the only one that, that thinks that um, we ought to have an informational meeting to explain to the people what it is that we're looking at so that they can you know, hear what the proposal is uh, before we ask them to come to a public hearing and, and express opinions. They but Didn't you just say, I'm sorry, go ahead. We're asking them to express opinions about something that they know little about. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I think that it's better to have the informational meeting and then have the, uh, the public hearing after they know what it's about and then they can speak intelligently about whether they support it or or, or oppose it. I, okay, did you, didn't you did you just say we had, there was an informational meeting already at Maine Dunstable School? That was on the middle school project? Oh, that wasn't on the That uh, was not on the uh, public works okay. building project, no. Okay. Hold them in doubt. I just want to check with Attorney Clark. Um, when a uh, motion for a bond is made, I believe we have to have a public hearing within a certain time frame. And it's usually 15 days to, is the minimum. Uh, so we're under that constraint, um, as well as uh, we're under the constraint of moving towards the end of the year. Anything that's not acted on by the end of the year uh, falls into a black hole and everything has to start over again. So they have an opportunity at the public hearing to voice any concerns. They'll have a presentation at the public hearing as to what the project's all about. And then it will have a budget meeting after that, which takes a vote on that particular, on all three bonds. And then it goes to the Board of Aldermen on the 18th, what, whatever that next date is. and. Uh, they can also come and, and hear a presentation and, and uh, voice any concerns at that time. So I think they have plenty of opportunities. I think what Alderman Jetty is alluding to is that he doesn't think we should vote on it before the public gets a chance to, to hear the presentation. Do you have someone lined up for a presentation that night, Alderman Dowd? Yes. Alderman Clemens. Uh, if I might, so just to get the calendar correct here, the public hearing would be on the second. Yes. The which and that would include a presentation that evening. Yes. And there'll be a separate um, public presentation on the ninth. Correct. And then we will take this up on the tenth. Correct. To which the public can speak here at the Aldermanic Chamber, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be three opportunities. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Kelly. Yes, if I could speak to that. Um, 
I guess I have a question because I think what I heard when um, I went to Maine Dunstable School was this feeling of the decision's already been made. Like, why am I being consulted now? There's not much that I can necessarily change from the public. Um, so if we have a public hearing and we approve the bond and then 10 people say they don't like that we're doing it at perhaps where the location, can we change that? once the bond has been approved because otherwise why are we collecting feedback alderman down um the passing of the bond does not mean that we're selling bonds or 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 expending that money it it gives the authority to move forward with that amount of funding for a project and um, again, under the time constraint, several time, time constraints relative to this project, um, the decision has been made by the people that are authorized to make the decision, the Board of Education and the Joint Special School Building Committee, to build a new school. Nobody has any concerns with fairgrounds in Penichuk, evidently, because we haven't heard anything on those. So it's... Uh, uh, the, the, the way the steps are put in place is the motion came before this board got referred to a public hearing. The public hearing is to take comments in, in favor and opposition, and we will hear that before the budget committee meets, and they, whatever action the budget committee meets then goes to the full board of aldermen on all three bonds, not just the school bond and the, f the full board of aldermen will make their decision at that point in time. And all bonds require 10 votes. So I was, yeah. once the bond is passed, then that doesn't necessarily mean that everything is cast in concrete. We have a lot of work to do. It does allow us to go into the detailed design phase and, and there are numerous opportunities for inputs before any shovels hit the ground. So um, the process has to be completed because of the way it's gone through this past year. And there have been nine opportunities during the past year for people to get input. And, uh, and we need to turn on the, the architects to do their work or because of the time frame involved. So I think there's plenty of opportunity for people to have input. And, and uh, uh, remember, the city is comprised of, of 70, 80,000 people. Um, I know there are some people that have concerns. But on anything we do as a city, there are always people that have concerns. We listen to them. We try to incorporate their concerns and alleviate their concerns, but that doesn't mean that we stop the train. Alderman Kelly? Um, thank you. Is this my response to, or can I go into my other remarks as well when I'm done? <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so I appreciate um, your explanation, and I think a lot of people around the horseshoe understands this, but all, a lot of times the public isn't fully aware. We can be talking about something for months before they're, you know, before they even understand what's going on. And I think that that's that's a continual thing that I hear, at least um, from my constituents. So I didn't know about it till it was on the Telegraph, or, and, you know, we all have busy lives. So I, I'm just trying to figure out a way to make sure that that people can get their comments out there um, and feel like they're heard, uh, especially on really big projects uh, like the DPW or the school building. Can I go into my remarks? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I actually just wanted to thank the children um, from the Boys and Girls Club. I thought that was a, a really great presentation, um, and I would echo um, Alderman Lopez's um, recommendation that we hear from them and, and kind of walk through those potential action steps with them. I think they did a really good job not only identifying things but laying out how we might help them um, improve the city that they live in. So I really – that was that was a nice bright spot for the evening. Um Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, one of the things I wanted to do was just shout out to the agencies in the city. We have an incredible <coughs> group of agencies that help um, everyone, especially as we go into the holidays. 
Um, we have the soup kitchen. We have the children's home, um, harbor, homes, N68 out of hunger, um, our community. I see every day um, examples of people who are coming together, and I appreciate seeing that at the holidays and even when it's not the holidays. So thank you. Alderman Clay and then Alderman Jetty. I, I just wanted to, to comment on the, the public hearing for the DPW. Um, I, so I want to make sure that I'm right in, in kind of adding to what uh, Alderman Clement said. There will be um, technically three chances before the Board of Aldermen does the final vote on that particular bond. Is that correct? There'll be the public hearing with um, a preview. Then there'll be a public hearing, I mean, um, information meeting with uh, DPW. And then there will be, the public will have the right to speak prior to that. So there will be ch three ch chances before we do anything. So nothing is a done deal. Even if the budget committee does or doesn't approve it, nothing's a done deal to the Board of Aldermen hears it on the 10th. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Alderman Jetty. I, I just wanted to clarify, Alderman Dowd, you were talking about uh, your remarks seem to be directed mostly at the middle school project. You know, what, what I'm talking about is the uh, Board of Public Works building project. And um, I'm not aware of uh, anything that is requiring us to, to move forward with that uh, other than we've got to use the money from the sale of the Burke Street property within two years. Um, but, del you know, delaying this by a few weeks or even a month, I don't think is going to uh, endanger that two-year uh, requirement that we spend the money from the Burke Street property. And, um, you know, I just, you know, it, my, 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 one of my original questions was, uh, you know, is it, is it appropriate? Is it out of order for me to to uh, make a motion? Is it? I don't want to put Attorney Clark on the spot, but uh, is there? You know, is it true um, that uh, we have to act on this uh, because we've we've already uh, made a motion on it? We have to do it within 15 days or whatever was mentioned. Attorney Clark. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I guess I would say yes if you if you are looking to reschedule the public hearing on the public works um, building bond, um, or even, I mean, I guess it wouldn't just be postponing, it would be probably rescheduling to a, to a date certain. I think that would be a, a motion and action by the full board. So that would be in order? I, I, I don't see why not. Hold them down. However, if this, particular legislation is not passed by this board before January 5th, it dies. And it would have to start all over again, which would have to go through the entire process again. And that takes time. I personally don't feel that there will be a presentation for every bond, that every public hearing we have, regardless of what it is. There's always a presentation and there will be a presentation on that building as well as the other BPW bond that's being presented that same evening and it's also televised so people can get input that way and it's recorded so people can look at it at any time uh, so there are plenty of opportunities and I don't see that there's any great controversy other than some people may have some misconceptions that would be clarified at the public hearing and I have more to involvement in the joint special and the actual DPW building, but. All the woman, Melissa Golia. Thank you. Um, I, I too was looking at this informational meeting and, and looking at the timelines, but as Alderman Dowd indicated, there will be a presentation prior to the public hearing. And as I'm looking at the email about the informational meeting, I would hope that many, much of the information that's going to pre be presented at the informational meeting will be presented the night of the public hearing because all of the aldermen need to have that information to vote, or at least those who are members of the budget committee. Um, and supposedly, it, 
this email says they're going to talk about the options that were analyzed um, regarding the renovation of the current facilities, the potential of utilizing city land, um, and the option of building new. I would think all of that will be presented at the public hearing. And so what I would encourage people to do is watch the public hearing, even if you don't want to come to City Hall, because I think for some people that will be the first time they hear the information, and then go to the informational meeting the next night and maybe have some questions crafted after listening to the public hearing. Seek answers for your questions or additional information. And then, again, when that piece of legislation comes back to the full board, there will be another opportunity to at least comment, not ask questions, but comment. So a good presentation at the public hearing, I think, will lay a nice base for people to have 24 hours to mull over what's going to be presented to go to the informational meeting and not hear that information cold, but then maybe dig a little deeper. So I've been looking across the horseshoe at Alderman Dowd, and I am sure you will convey that message to DPW. Not only will I convey it, but I'm sure the mayor will as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Alderman Lopez. I just want to say, um, well, it's my understanding of roles that while the at-large aldermen have to represent the entire city and have obligations to engage and interact with the entire city, one of the reasons I never wanted that job is because at the local level, we also have the same obligations to represent our constituents in a vote make decisive action, and then also to engage them when issues that we're not sure about personally or want to make sure that they are aware of, we have a responsibility to actually reach out to them as act as ambassadors. The timeline laid out here seems like there's plenty of opportunity for us to do that as local aldermen as well. There will be plenty of media. The city spends money on, on paying staff to put it on YouTube, to promote it on public access, to record the minutes, you know, all of that. We have the media in this room, and I believe they'll be at this meeting now. Um, so there is going to be plenty of content. So I think if there's concern that our constituents aren't going to be aware of something, then we need to work to make sure they're aware of it. Alderman Jetty. So <laughs> I, you know, I, I realize that the, uh, the Board of Public Works needs new facilities. I, you know, I learned that... Um, after I was elected and before I attended the first meeting of the board. Um, so I'm not opposed to their building a new building, but I think I feel it's very important that um, my constituents in Ward 5, where this is proposed, you know, the, the landfill property, where this is proposed to be, um, you know, I, I, you know they, they deserve an opportunity to, uh, to hear what the plans are. Um, I'm looking... And because I'm down this path this far, <laughs> even though the, there doesn't appear to be a light at, uh, at this particular tunnel for me, but I, I feel that I need to pursue this. Um, so right now, the, the informational meeting is scheduled for December 9th. Um, the the um, Budget Review Committee has a, a meeting presently scheduled for the 16th. And the Board of Aldermen meeting has, uh, the Board of Aldermen have a meeting scheduled for the 23rd. So uh, if I'm not, if, if I'm not correct, it seems to me that we could postpone the public hearing on the BPW meeting, uh, building only, not, not the middle school, just the BPW meeting. If we could postpone the public hearing to December 16th, the night of the Budget Review Committee meeting, and uh, then the Board of Aldermen is meeting the following week, the 23rd. And, um, you know, so we, we could, uh, I, I think there's time for the board to, uh, to act on this, even if we postpone the public hearing until the 16th. So since I've heard that it's in order, I would like to make a motion to uh, postpone the public hearing on the, on the Board of Public Works building uh, to uh, <coughs> December 16th. You heard the motion. Discussion on that motion. Alderman Dowd. Yes, I 
when we were first talking about the public hearings and the dates and having them and everything, uh, Treasurer Fredette came to me and said that he would like to have all three of those public hearings the same night. Um, and so this is all going in lockstep because it saves him a tremendous amount of work with bond council. So uh, the request to have these in, in a separate meeting and, and in this time frame was a request of the city treasurer. Further discussion? The motion, oh, Alderman Clemens, sorry. So I understand that the motion is in order. Uh, my question is, is that are we meeting the legal obligations um, required by the state of New Hampshire or our own ordinances uh, regarding public hearings if we were to just uh, reschedule this to the 16th? Because I know that there's, we have to do public notices and things like that. And so that's, that is the nature of my uh, question. I would have to defer to Attorney Clark. Um, I think from a, from a legal standpoint, the, the statute for bonding, I think it might even actually only be seven days notice, although I don't have the analysis for the, <clears throat> I, I, I'm, I'm getting a nod from the city clerk. So um, legally, we'd meet the, the notice requirement for scheduling that public hearing. I don't know if there'd also be any um, issues with uh, getting that notice published or anything. Madam Clark. Thank you. Attorney Clark is correct. It's seven days. It takes three days to get it in the paper. But I think more importantly is after the public hearing, you must wait, I believe, 15 days before you take that second reading, that vote. So there has to be a period of time, according to the RSAs, I believe, be after the public hearing, before the second reading. And if I'm correct, if my memory serves me correctly, that's 15 days. The sheet's in the back, if you'd like me to get mm -hmm. that in the reference to the RSA. Yes, that would, that would be that would be helpful, I think. Okay. Any other comments while we're waiting on this subject? Alderman Clemens. Well, my only other comment would be that if 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 indeed we have to wait the 15 days after the public uh, hearing, then this uh, then the bond wouldn't come up actually until the um, the 23rd anyway because it couldn't come on our calendar for the 10th. And so therefore that would create a situation where we had the public hearing on the 2nd. We had the um, the other informational meeting and then there'd be a significant number of days in between that and uh, the, the next Board of Aldermen where that would appear, which would be the 23rd of December. Uh, and actually, all three of those um, bonds would take place uh, that evening uh, if, if what the clerk is saying is, is correct. Any other comments? While we're waiting for the clerk, Alderman Clay. Actually, the answer will probably have to wait for the clerk. So, if we have the public hearing on the second, then that would mean that we we cannot vote on it on the tenth. Is that correct? We would actually have to wait to the twenty third to vote on it. That's what we're. That's what the clerk will determine for us. Correct. So, we, regardless, we cannot hear it until the twenty third, if the fifteen days is whether we change the public hearing or not. Alderman Melissa Golia? Yes, but I believe um, the question was, if the informational meeting is going to be the 9th, could we not hold the public hearing at the next budget meeting, which is the 16th? Is that correct? Your next budget meeting for December would be the 16th? Days. And if that is the case, it can't happen because 16 plus 15 is 31 and our next, so you would be having a special meeting on New Year's, New Year's Eve or because <laughs> we can't, we can't like hear it on the 23rd if I've done the math correctly yeah. and I've followed all the yeah. dates correctly that are being put out. 
Um, so I think that that's, you know, it would be a special meeting on July 2nd, or January 2nd, <laughs> that you would have to hold. Alderman Clemens. No, oh, well, I, I'll, I'll defer to the... Um, well, what we have confirmed is that the, the charter requires a duly advertised public hearing. Um, the RSA that I was thinking of is uh, RSA 33-9. Uh, oh, wait a minute, which requires a two-thirds vote the passage resolution. But I see what you're saying, Sue, that there might not actually be a, the charter might not actually have any specific dates or time frames. It just says a duly advertised public hearing. Alderman Clemens. My, can I just ask the, the maker of the motion uh, through you a question? Would, would it, might it satisfy you uh, to simply have these bonds voted on on the 23rd as opposed to the 10th? Uh, Alderman Jetty? Um. My thought was that uh, that the uh, public um, ought to have an opportunity to know what the project is, you know, what the plans are, and um, before the hearing, before the budget review committee, um, you know, I guess if. If we can do this the, the way that I've proposed legally, that would be my preference. If we if we can't do it, then then I, I understand that um, that we'll do it as as initially proposed. Yes. Okay. We do have confirmation on the time frames. Okay. Um, RSA thirty three colon eight dash little a. Um, mentions that, yes, the notice of the time, place, and subject of the hearing published in a newspaper at least seven days before it is held, and the hearing shall be held at least 15 days, but not more than 60 days prior to the meeting in which the bond is to be voted on. So we do have the, the seven and 15 day, seven prior and 15 day after. So just to clarify, then that means that the, with the public hearing on the second, it would be voted on on the 23rd of December. Um, and if we were to move that hearing, um, really, we, to the date proposed uh, in this motion, um, we'd have to call a special meeting at some point in January in order to um, dispose of the, or to make a decision on that. Yes. Alderman Kelly, if I could ask a question of Attorney Clark, sure. Do you have to give a seven-day notice for cancellation of a public hearing? No, I think you could probably cancel any time. It's just it would just always the seven days is really relative to giving people notice when it's going to be so they could come. Thank you, Alderman Tunza, did you have a question? I, I did have a, I, I do have a question. I just. I have a question about the the timing of, of the motion that was made. We're we're here in in remarks by members of the board of aldermen. In um, in the motion was made. It seems to me that um, it was more proper to make the motion when we were debating uh, or, or after a first reading of the bill. Um, that's my only concern about us taking it up now. I don't know. I'm, I can't find in, in the book whether it's proper or not, but. Um, I don't know if Corporation Council has a thought uh, about that. Um, it, it just struck me that uh, that the issue would, had come up because the informational meeting, the scheduling of the informational meeting was sort of new information that uh, had sort of come up recently, and I'm not sure that was known when the, um, the public hearings were scheduled. And so it's. I mean, we'd still have a. We'd still have an opportunity before 
uh, the public hearing, I, I suppose, to postpone the public hearing on that. Uh, it seemed to me that would be the more appropriate time to, to take this up um, rather than right now. But Call them in doubt. The, the, the Department of Public Works meeting where this was voted on had a presentation by the architect and the construction manager to convince the uh, members of the Department of Public Works, on, uh, Board of Public Works, on how to vote on this. That presentation is all that you would probably get anyway, and it is online, and anybody can go look at it. So if the maker of the motion has people that are concerned, I would suggest that they go look at that meeting if they want information before the public hearing. Uh, I am not inclined to want to move any of the votes on the bond to the 23rd. We're getting into the holidays. People may not be here. You have to have 10 votes. And uh, I, I certainly am not willing to move the, the, um, the, the school bond. And my uh, recommendation is that this board vote against the motion that's on the floor. Alderman Clemens. Thank you. Unfortunately, we, we, we just got confirmation. We don't have any choice about 23rd being the day we vote on the bonds if we keep the public hearing uh, as it stands. So that, to me, that's kind of a non-issue. Non but regarding the, the, um, the motion on the, on the floor, I, I was okay with it so long as we could have voted on the 23rd. Um, but as we can't do that, I think what we have to ha what we have to go back to our constituents with is the fact that this is a an imperfect uh, situation where we're having a public hearing. At that public hearing, there's going to be a presentation. There's going to be time for people to comment. There's going to be another hearing or another presentation in the public after that point. And then there's going to be, you know, between the 9th and the 23rd, a multiple, to, multiple opportunities for, uh, you know, folks to reach out via email, the phone, come and knock on my door, talk to me about it. Um, and at the Board of Alderman meeting, Board of Alderman meeting on the 23rd, discuss the issue uh, and make your comments before we vote on it. Um, is it is it a perfect scenario? No, but I think that it affords people enough time uh, to be able to get the information that they need and um, have them come and make a, you know, tell us what their informed public opinion is at the meeting on the 23rd, or if they can't do that, some point before then, either in writing, through the telephone, or again, anybody can always knock on my door and, and say hello. Um, so I'm going to not support the motion on the table uh, because I feel that there is enough time um, for people to have to um, get their point across and to get information on this. Alderman Schmidt. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I think it's pretty clear that um, the final vote for this will come well after everybody has had a chance to listen and to inquire. I have already had uh, several people contact me about this. Um, in fact, I contacted Administrator Byers, and she said, just give me their numbers. I will talk to them. And on checking later, she had satisfied their questions. They've got They've got this uh, fully prepared for us, and I think we should just simply go ahead with the process. Thank you. Alderman Lopez. Uh, the dates that are and the restrictions that the city clerk and corporation council laid out, can I just call the question? Motion is to call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Motion carries. Sorry. <laughs> Could the clerk please read back the motion that's on the floor? The motion is to postpone the public hearing on the resolution for the bonding of the new BPW uh, building to December 16th. Alderman O'Brien? No. Alderman Gitch? No. Alderman Harriet Gathright? No. Alderman Dowd? No. Alderman Clee? No. Alderman Laws? No. 
Alderman Lopez? No. Alderman Karen? No. Alderwoman Kelly? No. Alderman Jetty? Mm, yes. <laughs> Alderwoman Melisa Goya? No. Alderman Tenza? No. Alderman Schmidt? No. Alderman Clemens? No. Alderman Milshire? No. We have one yes and 14 nay. And that motion carries. Fails. Yes. Okay. Continue on with comments. <laughs> Alderman Lopez. You didn't skip well, anybody over here because we got completely confused? Yeah. Oh, we, we were still over here. Okay. All the woman Kelly. Another bite at the apple here. <laughs> I won't take long. Okay. Um, I just, I appreciated the conversation that happened. Um, and I, I still want to reiterate that I think that there is something to be looked at in terms of how we make sure the, the public knows about things. Because there were people who came and said, I live next to this, and I didn't find out about it until I saw it on the front of the Telegraph. And while I appreciate that we are representatives, um, we're also, you know, we have busy lives too, so how do we figure out making sure that people have the information and feel like they're included in the process um, from earlier on? So. Leave it at that. Alderman Karen. I'll make it quick. Wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Alderman Lopez. I will not be rushed. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say I'm very grateful for all the people. I call a question. <laughs> um, I'd like to express gratitude for all the people who helped organize the Thanksgiving, um, all the people who attended it as well today. Um, I think it meant a lot to the people who got to come and feel fellowship, um, but also who had the opportunity to see their elected officials and represented. The Thanksgiving uh, celebration took place at 45 High Street. I know Alderman Clee and her husband were there all day helping set up. Um, Alderman Jetty was there as well, even though he refused to go anywhere near potatoes. Um, <laughs> and uh, Mayor Donches as well, I think, was a very welcome presence as usual. Um, I also wanted to uh, comment on one of the slides that went by regarding the that the Boys and Girls Club students uh, wrote. It's my impression, and I would like to hear from the, the students directly, but it's my impression that they were calling attention to homelessness as something that they were willing to help address the homeless state, not the the concept that we just shouldn't have people in the state in the city who happen to be homeless. I think they are as aware as anybody is who's experienced it or had family members who have that we have a shortage of shelter capacity. Um, and I think what they were drawing attention to when they said we don't think we should have homeless people because they could be you know, harassed in their sleep, was that people who are unsheltered are particularly vulnerable, not just to the elements, but to their fellow citizens who might dehumanize them in some ways and see them as a barrier, an obstacle, or a difficulty when they're people and they need more supports. Um, I think our city has an obligation, once a problem gets to a certain size, to take it on and say, look, we can't just pass this off to nonprofits, charities, we need to get involved. Um, to that effect, we have been. Um, we've been working on getting um, updates made to the um, city welfare guidelines. Um, the mayor has met with several community groups and organizations to try to identify who would be able to uh, support a cold weather warming station. Um, we've made efforts to try to reach out to, you know, members of the community that are focusing on emergency shelter supports um, and to bolster existing programs. So we are working on it. There are a lot of people that are um, putting their best foot forward and trying to consolidate their resources. At the same time, we're not really reaching the point. We did a citywide um, evaluation. We went out into the woods. We went looking for every campsite we could find. We found over a dozen um, and over 20 people that were unsheltered You know, in the course of one night. And we believe we scratched the surface. We didn't find the deeper sites. We didn't meet the people who are floating in between, and we are aware that that changes night to night. So there's still a lot more work to do. I think our students are well aware of that. Students like Alexi, who has, you know, since for the last 10 years at least, I believe, uh, worked her holidays to try to generate what good she could and what support she can for people when they're most in need and they're most vulnerable. Um, I know Kendra Susi, uh, one of the volunteers today who made food for uh, through Soul Sisters, has a son who also, for his birthday, is organizing uh, toiletry kits. There's a lot of kids that are doing a lot of work, and I think we should be joining them. We should be engaging them. And this is a bigger problem than we've been able to solve. 
we just have to keep working on it. True, Alderman Lopez. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Alderman Laws. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. And uh, remind anybody listening that <clears throat> if you know that this is a big week for drinking and having fun with your friends and family, the National Police know that as well. So it's 2019. Download an app. <coughs> get home safely. Alderman Clay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I, I do want to say that although Alderman Jetty would not go near the pe peeling potatoes, he did empty trash, though. <laughs> so. I would not go near. <laughs> he was very hardworking in that. Um, and I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and remind everybody to come to the stroll. Um, even my two greyhounds and my husband will be with me. Um, and the other thing that I, I wanted to mention, we talked about how we get information out to people. Um, and one of the things I do, but it does take a lot of work, is um, I do a weekly newsletter. And I give them the entire calendar, the links to all the agendas, um, and then I give them what the previous week's meetings were with the YouTube, the minutes, everything on there. So I get the word out to those people who who apply to it. And then I try to, as much as I can, put that newsletter literally on my Facebook page. I get information out as, as much as I can. It doesn't mean that they come. But I think every effort that we try and every effort that we do um, does help. And you can only do so much for people. And I understand that in the case of the school that they'd only heard about it from that. But it had been in the paper prior to that. It was just that it was more significant and closer to it, and that's when people pay attention. So um, while I do have a lot of sympathy for all these people, no one wants anything in their backyard. Um, but it is kind of the realty, the, the real estate of it. And um, I, I love the fact that we have our public hearings where people do get to express their, their feelings and, um, and so on. And I think that's helpful. In the case of the DPW, there'll be three different presentations, not different, three present, three different days of presentations. There are things that are online, and I appreciated that Alderman Schmidt had passed on that you can contact DPW, and they're willing to, to talk to you, and I think we should do that, the same thing. As far as the school board is concerned, um, the, the school project is concerned, I know Alderman um, Dowd has been getting a lot of emails that he's been talking with people and engaging with people, so I think they do need to reach out to us, um, as well as us reaching out to them as best we possibly can. Um, and at that, I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Alderman Dowd. Yeah, I want to wish everybody a happy and safe Thanksgiving for you and your families. Uh, enjoy uh, the day. Uh, two, the stroll is a phenomenal event, and uh, every year it gets bigger and bigger, and it's just a great opportunity for friends to get together. Uh, people come from way out of town to come to the Nashua Stroll, so we ought to be very proud of, of that activity. Um, three, uh, I know that the communications are probably not ideal, and there may be other things we can do, but we meet the letter of the law as it's stated by ordinance and by state law, on notification of everything that's going on. Um, but we can do more. Uh, I have reached out to the people that were at the public hearing on, uh, not the public hearing, uh, the uh, joint special the other night, answered some of their questions because there was a lot of misinformation put out at that meeting, which I don't appreciate, but we have clarified it. And all of that information, all the questions that have been asked on the school project are going to appear on the Board of Education's website under a Frequently Asked Questions. Also, it's going to be presented to this board at, or, or at the public hearing by the architects. They're going to answer all those questions. And I will reach out to uh, Director Photo to also make sure that all the questions that are asked before the public hearing get answered when they do their presentation. Um, I'm not sure that we can do any more in that regard. Uh, let's see, the other thing is uh, speeding. Um, I happen to have a discussion with the chief of police today. Um, believe me, over the next couple of weeks or so, maybe more, they're going to be focusing on speeding. And they ask that any alderman that has somebody call about speeding on a street notify them immediately. They have ways of catching the people, and, uh, and they will be doing that. 
Uh, and the last thing is, speaking of misinformation, we are not in any of our plans for the middle school project tearing down Elm Street. We will be moving the school out of it, and then it will become a city property, which I, I think we have ideas for. We are not tearing the building down. We are not tearing Keith Auditorium down. So I just want to lay that out so people understand, because it's amazing what some false information can start matriculating around the city, and it doesn't do us any good. Anything for the Burger King? <laughs> Alderman Gaffrey. Alderman Gaffrey. Um, just want to say um, happy Thanksgiving to all of Nashua and to our mayor and our president and all my colleagues. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. <laughs> I hope that everyone has a, a good holiday and uh, be generous <laughs> and be safe. Everything seems to have been well stated, so uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, too, wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. I think we all have a lot to be thankful for. Um, I just have an announcement that the um, appointed an inauguration committee uh, that will be will consist of Alderman Karen, Alderwoman Melissa Golia, and our newly elected Alderman, Liz Liu. So they will be members of the inauguration committee. Committee announcements? Alderman Clemens. Yeah, there's a uh, public hearing. That's <laughs> 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 took my, took my shot. I'll give that to Alderman Gary. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Alderman Melissa Golia. Um, yes, on Thursday, <laughs> December 5th, there's a public hearing followed by a PEDC meeting. Thank you. Alderman Jetty. I just want to you know, make sure that um, after tonight's discussion, the people realize that there is a public hearing <laughs> next Monday night, December 2nd on the middle school project and the BPW project and a, th a third. And the new machines at the uh, landfill. The ones compact because right. we've been putting it off for three years. But and then uh, we, a week later on December 9th, the Board of Public Works is having an informational meeting at the landfill at 5.30 p.m. Okay. Alderman Karen. Yes. Uh, first and out. Personnel is meeting uh, Monday, December 2nd at 6.45. We only have two appointments uh, to review, so we'll get done in time for 7 o'clock public hearing. <laughs> Alderman Lopez, anyone else? Yeah, I'm trying Committees? to the internet slowed me down here. Uh, Substandard Lopez. Living Conditions Committee is on December 12th. Um, we're going to be talking about um, the expectations on the part of landlords to make sure that their heating works or that he is provided if there is one, um, and then also resources that the city provides to make sure people can stay heated in their units. Okay. So December 12th. Other committee announcements? Alderman Dowd. In case you haven't heard, there's a uh, public <laughs> hearing uh, on three bonds on Monday, followed by a budget meeting. Alderman O'Brien. Uh, there's going to be a meeting of infrastructure on Thursday, December 5th at 7 p.m., immediately following the EDC meeting. Uh, members of my committee, I cannot stress the importance of this particular meeting. We're going to be joined with the city treasurer. We're going to be looking at some of the property issues that in the city. So I hope that uh, we have a full attendance. So thank you. Thank you. I would... Alderman Lopez. Is this the annual who gets a sack of coal meeting? <laughs> it <of>. could be. <laughs> Can I ask everyone who has not turned in their committee choices to turn them in this week, please? Thank you. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Motion is to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned at 9.20 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye.